One of the most common things you might hear among people who are trying to make money with sports cards is the value of flipping cards from raw to graded. In this video, I wanted to go through some really concrete examples to really see if this is a good way to make money in the sports card hobby or not. Let's look at the numbers. All right, so the way I'm gonna do this, I have taken a variety of cards, pretty random. I took five cards that are kind of like base rookies, five cards that are silver rookies, five cards that are kind of like goat type base cards or, or simple parallels of like a Steph Curry, LeBron James type of players. And then I took some case hit cards uh, some like downtowns, kabooms, galactic, and presentations. I took just some random ones from these different categories. Now, these are not all the different categories. There's other cards, but you know, a lot of people will will have different approaches. Some people will try to do like base commons, um, flip, you know, to 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 grade to try to make money. Uh, you know, there's there's different approaches people will have. This is not necessarily capturing everything, but this is capturing a cross section of a bunch of things. And then I think it should give us some insight that just gives us a few things to think about if we're trying to do this. All right, so let's start this process. So first, I am going to start with the 23-24 Prism Victor Wimbanyama, number 136, base Prism Rookie. Uh, the prices, by the way, everything I'm putting on here, the prices are from cardhedger.com. If you're not familiar with cardhedger.com, I'll put a link in the description below. It's also a affiliate link that you're free to, to use if you would like. It's kind of similar to Card Ladder or mar uh, Market Movers, but it's by far my favorite. It has a lot more cards than the other ones, and it just is the most smooth one for me. I, I, I like it quite a bit. All right, so for the Victor Wembenyama Prism Rookie, the raw is valued at about $35. The PSA 10 is $130, and the PSA 9 is $50. So I don't know, maybe I'll run through a bunch of these and, and then we'll see you know, what we, what we see. I mean, there's already some things I, I noticed from the very first one, but I'll talk about it as we go. The next one we're going to look at here is the 2021 Prism Anthony Edwards rookie, card number 258. This one goes raw for about 55 bucks. The PSA 10 is 110 and the PSA 9 is 50. So less than the raw, which is interesting. Um, then we get to the 2018-19 Prism Luka Doncic rookie, number, uh, card number 280, which raw goes for about 66 bucks and a PSA 10 is 245 and in a PSA 9 is 132. Now we're at the Prism Jason Tatum rookie card number 16 from 2017-18 Prism. The raw goes for about 44 bucks, PSA 10 for 185 and PSA 9 for 60. So just a little bit more than the raw. And then going back in time a little bit further, this is the 2014-15 Prism Joel Embiid card number 253. Raw goes for about 40 bucks, PSA 10 about 100 bucks and PSA 9 about 45 bucks. So just quickly looking at these five base prism rookies, you can see the difference between raw and PSA 9 is is generally minimal. I mean, you know, in the Anthony Edwards, the PSA 9 is worth less than the raw. In the Victor Wembanyama, the PSA 9 is worth less than the raw plus what it would cost to grade something, and that's also the case with the Jason Tatum and then the Joel Embiid. Uh, also, so the only card among these five that actually makes a profit if it goes PSA 9 is the Luka Doncic rookie. And he's probably, you know, I would say he's probably the most sought of all of these players here. So, you know, so that's the demand is is higher with him. So maybe that's part of the reason that he his cards, his base card is maybe a little bit more likely of a kind of card to 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 grade. Now, I, one thing that would have helped in this exploration is also exploring the PSA pop counts. Uh, however, I just think in general, some of the PSA pop counts on these are high. Uh, I know just briefly looking the Victor Wembanyama cards do get a lot of PSA tents. I mean, probably 70 percent of the cards that have been sent in for grading have gotten a PSA 10 from that Prism rookie. All right, so let's look at the same players, but this time I want to look at the silver rookies, also Prism. You know, it's not that I like Prism the most. Prism is just kind of a good baseline for a lot of things. So I'm going to look at the silvers since they kind of just with a more valuable card, they'll give us a, a sense of some things. So same five players. We got the Victor Wembanyama. The raw goes for 539. PSA 9, 374, and PSA 9, 10, 935. So that one, you would lose money if it got a PSA 9. You'd rather just sell it raw. That's why some people actually are cracking out PSA 9s nowadays and selling them raw, which is wild. Um, the Anthony Edwards, 215 for the raw. The PSA 10 is 865, and the PSA 9 is 213. So again, the raw and the PSA 9, right about the same value. Raw even going for a little bit more. Luka Doncic, 283 for the raw. 
393 for the PSA 9 and 998 for the PSA 10. So another one, just like with the base ones, Luca looks like a little bit of a better bet for grading. Jason Tatum, the raw goes for 435, the PSA 10 for 860, and the PSA 9 for 169. That's crazy. That must be it must just be that there's not that many cards that have sold and that one kind of went through the cracks or a Ross had a spike or something because that's weird. Value proposition, you know, if you if you do that. So you can see, you know, why people would grade, but you can also see that people are grading for the PSA 10 specifically. So if there's any chance it's going to get a PSA 9, you could really just be losing your money on that. So, so it's really wild. Okay, now the next category I want to look at is kind of low-end GOAT type base cards. Now, I've seen a lot of people who will try this because, you know, there's not as many, just this random base Curry card or or like an Optic Hollow Curry from just a random year, LeBron James of a similar style of card. So I thought it would be worthwhile to just look and see what the value proposition is for these types of cards. Sometimes, even though the pop count of the raw is very high, the pop count of the graded can be actually relatively low because people People aren't grading them that much, which I think is part of the logic of why people try this. Let's see, just looking at a few random ones, if this seems to be something to look closer to. So the first one we're going to look at is from 2020, 2021, the Optic Hollow of Steph Curry card number 17. So raw, you can get this card for about five bucks. In a PSA 10, it's 55. and a PSA 9, it's 25. Uh, this is the 2223 Prism base card of Steph Curry, which raw you can get for about a buck. The PSA 9 goes for 22 and the PSA 10 goes for 26. And then here we have the base select concourse LeBron James card from 2018-19. Raw goes for about three bucks. The PSA 9 goes for 19 bucks and the PSA 10 goes for 16 bucks. So <laughs> that's strange right now. The PSA 10 was going for less than the PSA 9. That's very weird. Um, and then here we have the LeBron James 22-23 Prism Silver, which uh, card number 134. This one raw goes for about four bucks. PSA 10, 65 bucks. And PSA 9, 14 bucks. And then just, you know, this is a little bit different than all the other ones, but I just wanted to pop one on here for the conversation. This is the Michael Jordan 1990-91 Hoops card, which raw goes for about five bucks. PSA 10 goes for 285 and PSA 9 goes for 24. All right, so there's a few points I think are worth making in this one. You know, one, for example, this base card of LeBron James that has no color parallels, just a base card. This is not a sock card no matter what. There's nothing to it. So the fact that the PSA 10 is going for $16, which is less than a grading fee would be, makes it clear that base non-parallel type of cards just don't have demand, no matter what. Whether they're raw, they're PSA 9, they're PSA 10, it doesn't have demand, so grading it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I suspect that's true with a lot of these other cards. You know, you can see also the the the, the Curry examples, maybe if it got a PSA 9, you'd be able to basically break even on the Prism. The PSA 9 and the PSA 10 don't sell for that much of a difference in price, which to me, again, tells me if the PSA 9 and the PSA 10 are not selling a difference in price by that much, there's probably just not generally that much demand for that card. So I don't think it's worthwhile to spend $20 on grading a $1 raw card with the possibility that you make two or three bucks out of it. Doesn't seem like a good place to put your money. The Optic Hollow, the PSA 10 did go for a bit more. So this shows that there are some cards, there are times when there might be something worth considering that Optic Hollow raw $5, if it does get a PSA 10 and it goes for $55, you've made a little money. If it's a PSA 9, you've broken even. But you really have to know what you're what you're looking at. You know, the, the further years back you go, if if you know, the harder it is to get that kind of graded to get a card that's going to be graded ten. You could get better as this as a skill and maybe be able to do it on. And I think people who try to make money on this more regularly, they're probably looking for cards like that, that Steph Curry Optic Hollow. But it's hard to find, and it's not going to be most cards in that kind of category. That uh, LeBron James was maybe the Prism Silver was in a similar similar type of vein to that Optic Hollow. But again, if you just end up getting a base a PSA 9, you wouldn't have even gotten your grading feedback. I feel that it's not worth the risk. Now, I wanted to throw the Michael Jordan card in there because this is another thing a lot of people will do, thinking that trying some of these low-end Michael Jordan cards is, is a worthwhile endeavor. And this, I think, represents the reality pretty well. You know, a lot of these cards could be, you could find them for $1 to $5 raw. If you If they end up getting a PSA 9, maybe you just about break even. If you get a PSA 10, you could make a lot of money. 
However, getting a PSA 10 on a card that's 30 years old is nearly impossible. It is very difficult to PSA 10 on that kind of card. Not only is it the fact that it's 30 years old, but the quality control wasn't very good back then. It's so hard to imagine a card has, has even when it first came out back 30 years ago, very rarely would have been PSA 10 quality by today's standards. But you know the, what could happen over 30 years makes it even harder. So the, the pop counts are gonna be a lot lower than that. In fact, even getting a PSA 9 on a card like that is pretty hard. And PSA 9, you're actually, if you're lucky, maybe you're making back your grading fee and that's about it. Uh, maybe you make a couple of bucks. And then if you end up getting a PSA 8 or a PSA 7 or something, which is very likely on a card this old, then you're actually losing money. So that's why you got to be a little careful on those ones. All right, now let's look at something that, you know, raw has quite a bit of value. And these are case hit type card examples. So this, I just grabbed a few random ones. So uh, this one is the Jason Tatum 2020 Crown Royale Kaboom card. This one sells raw for about $761. The PSA 10 goes for $13.30 and the PSA 9 for $765. So again, PSA 9 and raw, just about the same. Here's the Nikola Jokic 2021 one in one downtown card, which raw goes for about $700, PSA 10 for $15.25, PSA 9 for $516. So again, here's the Anthony Edwards 2020 draft pick downtown. Raw goes for about $405, PSA 10 for $1,000, and PSA 9 for $374. So again, PSA 9 is less than raw. Here is the LeBron James 2018 Revolution Vortex Galactic. This one raw goes for about $226, PSA 10 for $686, and PSA 9 goes for $180, so again, less than raw. Uh, and then the Steph Curry, and this is a case hit card that doesn't cost a whole lot, but it's still a case hit card. The raw goes for about 60 bucks, the PSA 10 for 139, and the PSA 9 for 56. So again, less than raw. So what was true with about all five of those is the PSA 9 goes less than raw. I guess the Jason Tatum is about the same, but basically less than raw. So you have to be getting a PSA 10 to be able to make money on this kind of higher end card that you're sending to get graded, at least in these five examples. And it seems to be, this is generally what I've noticed in general, This all the, these random ones I'm choosing seem to be right around like what my expectation would be for most cards. These are actually, and that's to say, these are actually some of the most sought sets and the most sought players. So with that in mind, you know, if you have a player that's a little bit less sought or uh, insert set or case hit that's a little bit less sought, it might be even harder to find, you know, the demand for a PSA 9. So this is why, you know, I, I, I think this is a really interesting exploration. I think this, this is the kind of numbers you really have to think about when you're trying to figure out if you want to flip raw to graded as a viable option for making money with sports cards. I think a lot of people are thinking they're gonna make a lot of money in this path and they're really not. And you have to be a little bit careful, you can, but essentially with the number of cards that you send off to get graded, you have to be able to get good enough at recognizing a PSA 10 that your gem rate is gonna be like at least 75% of the cards you send in are getting a PSA 10. If you're sending in cards and half of them are coming in PSA 10s, half of them are coming in less, a PSA 9 or something, overall, you might not be making any money, especially if a few of those were like a couple of PSA 8s in there or something like that. If you can get 75% of your cards at PSA 10, you're doing great. If you get to the point where you can learn the skill like that, that's wonderful. One of the challenges is it's not just about the skill, like your skill, but at the same time, you can never quite know the standards are not so mm, consistent um, and they can they can change around a little bit here and there. So even as your skills get better, it doesn't necessarily mean that's going to always result in PSA 10s, but it certainly will help you. So if you're going to do this path of trying to make money with sports cards, flipping raw to graded, the absolute most essential thing is you become better and better at recognizing PSA 10s and be extremely picky about what you are sending to get graded. So anyway, I've made a lot of videos about different things related to uh, grading. I, I, I do think grading is an option, but you got to be careful. So anyway, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.